Hello, today is November the 4th, 2013, and I'm happy to tell you we're in the studio of our video club here in Laguna Woods. There's a lot to do here, and this is certainly one of the fun things. We're continuing with a series called Remarkable Lives. I'm Sydney, and today it's my pleasure to introduce you to a friend of mine, Helen Tan. Good morning. Hello, Sydney. Hello. Uh, Helen and I have been friends for about six years. We took a writing class together, and since then, Helen has written two books after the age of 88, and she's presently working on her autobiography at 92. So, my favorite parts are the early years of China. Helen. Can you tell me what your earliest memories are of you living in China? I was grown up in a very old-fashioned Chinese family. We live in the southern part of China, near Hong Kong and mm. Canton. My early life so far I can remember was my great-grandfather. He was an orphan. He had no way to earn a living. Hmm. So he went to Vietnam to be a rice trader. A rice trader is dealing with rice, and he doing quite well. Eventually, he became a land owner. In fact, what I told about his story entirely different. They told me, great-grandfather, went to Vietnam to work with a Chinese land owner. Mm -hmm. And later on, marry his boss's only daughter oh. and inherited all the land from her. And later on, he bought more land. He became a big land owner in Vietnam. I know. He made a lot of money because you had a very big house. How many bedrooms did you have in the house? Well, after my great-grandfather passed away, he, she and my grandfather, her only son, decided to settle in China. They bought a house with altogether about 26 bedrooms with no running water and no restroom. But no running water was not a problem. We had two wells in our house. We had plenty of water to use. No restroom, also no problem. We use bucket system. I see. And servants in the early years, in the 20s, 1920s, the house had many servants? You see, we had two big kitchens. One big kitchen catering for our children and a servant and a maid. Therefore, in my early day, I never eat with my parents. Mm. So you had separate quarters. And your grandmother, I found her very interesting because she had bound feet. Yeah. You see, my grandmother came from a good family. She was famous of her little bound feet. She's truly a very good, fine lady. Contrast with my great-grandmother, she had a pair of natural feet. In China at the time, only a very poor family had a natural feet. So all my native friend and neighbor all looked down at her. They saw a very strange Vietnamese woman came to the house, and then she would walk out the street without any shame. Without any shame, she had large feet. Yeah. But she was a very wealthy woman. Yeah. But they thought she was a, a worker. Strange, strange. They call her that Vietnamese woman. This was a great insult, but my great-grandmother never cared of it. She just go on with her own business. In fact, she owned a few stores nearby our house. We used to go there to buy sundry and didn't know it was owned by my great-grandmother. Wow. Your grandmother had a hairdresser. 
Oh yes, that's also very interesting, if I had time to say. Sure. Well, my grandma, great -grand, my grandmother had a hairdresser. She came to the house to do my grandmother hairdo seven days a week, even sometimes twice a day. She came also dressed up in white, very crispy overall, with black trousers and braided hair. And uh, grandmother really welcomed her so well because, in fact, she is also can brought news for my grandmother. That time we had no telephone. So when she came, she brought news from my grandmother, friends, Renny Tears. Is it because your grandmother wasn't able to leave the house because she had bound feet? She stayed mostly in the house? So she never stepped foot outside the house. She only had a sedan chair brought into her when she had social gathering. Ah, so really the hairdresser brought her all the news of the outside right. world. And she even had her twice a day yeah. because it was so interesting. Sometimes I was playing along nearby. The hairdresser would say, why don't you go out to play? In fact, she didn't want me to hear her secret talk with my grandmother. Oh, gosh, those are fun days. <laughs> so grandmother would give me something and then get me out of the house. The and grandfather. Grandfather had rice fields in Vietnam. Well... Grandfather, in fact, was a, quite a character. Mm -hmm. she, uh, he went to Japan to study law. That was in Sun Yat-sen Revolution time. And uh, he never worked with anybody because she had to manage her then in Vietnam. She ha he had to spend six months, a year in Vienna, six months in China. So he told my grandmother, say, I need a woman to look after me while I'm in Vienna. Mm. He was eyeing my grandmother's personal maid, a young lady. Grandmother say, I had to ask her. Mm -hmm. If she agree, you can have her. But the young girl say, I would rather be a wife to a poor family. Besides, I don't want to go to Vienna. She so, didn't like your grandfather. No, that is not her, her life. She, she want different way. So with my grandmother permission, grandfather took a young lady to Vienna as his concubine or second wife. And when he brought her home, he wanted to bring her into the house, but your grandmother... When they came back to China, there is accommodation problem. We had different quarters. So grandfather had a bungalow built in a garden as his own quarter. That's the story I love. And <clears throat> when your grandmother was running the house, you loved your grandma, and you would run in her bedroom, and something really excited you in that bedroom. Oh, that is my maternal grandmother. My grandmother also, maternal grandmother, also a character. Do I have time? We have time for, yes, we do. All right. That uh, my parents lived next door to each other. They never met. It was a matchmaker used photo to arrange this union. My grand maternal grandmother loved this marriage, but she had a big problem because my mother was three years older than my father. That wouldn't do in that time. So my grandmother hide my mother's age. Oh. So make it work. It turned out to work beautifully. Then, but there was tragedy when no, your mother passed away. No, that was later on. Okay. And then my grandmother had another problem. She had given my mother a rich diary. 
including a newly imported singer machine. That singer machine is like a furniture, you know, with a stand. No, they were big That in the was day. the thing my grandmother wanted to show off. So she, she said, it's a great pity. I have such good diary. And then it's no fun just bring to next door to my father's house. So a woman of her friends said, you can have one. You can have all your homemade furniture and your good things away from my father's house. Had a wedding procession, had a procession, go to the end of the street and then from the next street enter into my father's house. So they brought it all in. So, and can you just say briefly, I know you were nine years old when your mother passed away after giving birth to five children. Yeah. You see, my mother gave birth to three girls, two boys. And every time when she gave birth to a baby, my grandmother always engaged a wet nurse for the baby for one year, the contrast one year, and then also engage a profession lady to look after my mother. You will be surprised to know my mother was not allowed to get out of bed for one month. Mom. It was the lady look after, look after her. When my mother had a, my younger brother, the fifth boy, she developing a very high temperature. And then we had a lot of kind of talk about ghosts, everything. One of servants say my mother must be possessive. Maybe her last lie husband from her. And then my grandmother went to my mother, talked to her mm -hmm. face to face, as if she were talking to a spirit. My grandmother say, you can ask anything you want, but not her. My mother say, I like to eat a kind of fruit. In fact, at the time, one fruit out of season, you cannot get it. My mother, my grandmother was so sad. Say, that I can't do. Another servant say, oh, she knew a living Buddha saved many lives. So my grandmother say, okay, ask me to go with this servant to find the living Buddha. When I got to his house, I saw the big fat man standing in the middle of the room. My servant had coached me, so I quickly go to the living Buddha, kneel down to bed for my mother's life. He put his two big fat hands on my head and murmuring a few words and gave me a few yellow paper. All the Chinese know this yellow paper, we call it magic paper. Magic. This paper will do magic. So ask me, take this paper, sleep into my mother's pillow, that's all. So we turn home, I did as I was told. The servant said, well, it's a good sign. Because the mother saw me, she turned her face to the other side. The spirit must be scared of the yellow paper. Oh. In fact, only two, three days later, my mother passed away. Oh, that was a sad time for you. I wanted to ask you, when you moved here, your life really came alive and you started writing. I was with you when you were 88 years old, writing your first book. You've actually written one in Chinese. Tell me about your autobiography. Is it in English? Is it in Chinese? And is it flowing for you, or how is that going? Well, my second book I published last year in Chinese. All my children cannot read it, so I had to write <laughs> my present book in English. The English is this uh, divided in three parts. Mm -hmm. First part is my life, my history. Second part is I wrote in journal. 
about my imagination or my experience, third part in Chinese. That's my present, I, I work on my book. So is that third part in Chinese a summation of your whole life, but written in Chinese? Yes, that's also. But most of Chinese part I have published in Chinese newspaper. So I want to make a few collection on my book, third part of it. And how is it that you write it in Chinese? I saw a piece of equipment. Here's your computer, which you learned at 88. And then you have a piece of equipment that translates the Chinese? You see, I has always liked writing my hobby, either writing or play bridge. That's the main see. part of my hobby. For Chinese, I always write in handwriting until my cousin taught me how to use computer. So with computer, I know I can publish my book. But the computer, I had trade in with my hand because every word I write here is show on a screen. But then the book published last year, okay, mm -hmm. because I know in Chinese computer. And is your Chinese computer hooked up to your regular computer? Uh, I had the English computer my son bought me, mm -hmm. and now I had a Chinese computer. But the English one is easier to write on. So when your Chinese computer sits here, you can actually type in, print out, and then it's in Chinese That's script. That's right. That's all right. Very interesting. And what is your favorite thing about living in Laguna Woods? Well, I moved in Laguna Woods in 2003. Unfortunately, in 2005, my husband had a swimming accident in Clapper One. Mm. So, after that, I say to myself, after Sydney helped me to publish a book about my life, after that I say that is a stage. After that is my own life. So after that I try to develop. I have many friends in Nugunau village, and then life getting better and better because Nugunau is so safe and with so many good neighbors. I made so many friends, so I'm happier. And I know Helen likes to learn. She started driving well into her 80s. She got a driver's license because her husband didn't feel that she should be driving. And when she didn't have him any longer, she developed a whole life. Well, Thanks talking, to... talking about driving, my husband always criticized me when I drive. So I never drive when I'm moving to Gunao village. Oh. Did but you tell me he would follow you? Yeah. He never think I can drive. He always feel I'm, I'm no good in driving. So when I got my driver license, I drove to the office. I was so free, so happy. And I did not realize he followed me until I got to the uh, office, I was so silly because when he drove me, he always parked outside the office. I also drove outside the office. Then I realized no where to park my car. So I turned back, drove to the parking lot. When I got out of the car, he was next to me. <laughs> he said, do you think you always had a driver <laughs> like that? But then, Later on, he followed me at least two, three times. I pretend to know nothing, but later on, he know I can drive by my own. <laughs> She's still learning, <clears throat> 92 years old, and she told me this is the best time of her life. Yes, I'm very happy because I can develop what I like, what I want to do, and I have so many good friends. Before that, I had no friend of my own. My husband is a civil engineer. His friend, either engineer or lawyer, I just tag along. They talk only either engineer or lawyer. 
Now I have my own life, I have my own friend, my neighbor so nice. I live in Nukunau village for 10 years. Life is getting better and better for me. <laughs> and one more thing, the grandchildren. Helen told me when she was 87 years old that there's one thing in her life that she is missing, and that was a grandchild. At 87, she got her first grandchild. No, I had my first grandchild. Oh, that's right. That's that was by my first marriage. Oh, that's right. I was young. I went to work after graduating from high school, and I met my first husband. He is a pilot from Chiang Kai-shek Government Air Force. I got married at the age of 26. Two years later, he had an airplane accident. I became a widow at the age 28 oh. with a son who not even can walk. But then that was the time American driver Otomi Bong in Hiroshima, Second World War ended and Japanese surrender. Then I make a best decision of my life. I return back to college to study. And you had a grandchild. I had a grandchild. Now is 35 right. years old. He is now working, doing animation things. And then, um, unfortunately, at the age 31, he had a heart attack. The work was so, so pushing. Yeah, it's stressful. So my daughter-in-law took one year to take care of him. He's now completely recovered. I'm sorry, Helen, I forgot about the 31-year-old <laughs> and he's doing well and that's good. So you had 31 years between your grandchildren. <laughs> now my, my son from my second marriage he never had a girlfriend before. He studied medicine. When he got married at the age 49, second year he had a son. And then another two years he has another son. So that also inspired me, I want to live longer. I want to see my baby's grandson grow up. That helped me because I be try careful to improve my health. So nowadays, I'm very happy to say I have no illness, no operation, no pain or aches, and then enjoy to see my two little grandsons. There's something to be said for Tai Chi. I've seen her do it myself. I've seen Tai Chi help me a lot. When I came to Nugunau village, there was Nisho world at that time. I attend Tai Chi class. Tai Chi helped me a lot because help you to balance your body and help you to to know to to you see walking also help. It help you to be stand straight and help you for many things like circulation, balancing. I benefit a lot by knowing it. When I visit Helen, she hops on the sofa and sits on her legs. She pulls them up under her. And I always think Tai Chi must really help with flexibility. Oh, yes. But again, I want to say thank you. I want to mention one of your sons has a laboratory. He's a doctor, a professor, and he is working on DNA cells. No, that's my younger son. Your younger son. And in the DNA cell, we have crystals. Yeah. And he is separating the crystals. Yeah. And from what I read is, there's only this many people studying crystal in the cells of our DNA. And eventually, they'll be able to help control the diseases that are you taking see, us. You see, my three sons, my two sons and my daughter-in-law, they each one had a laboratory of their own to pursue their dream. My younger son, he benefited a lot when he came to America as a teenage boy. When he graduated from high school, he got Westinghouse, came in number four, whole nation. That was good. 
And then when he graduated from college in Cornell, he got a Marshall Scholarship. I think you all know Marshall about scholarship. Marshall Scholarship. And then he met a American um, professor who was asked to go to Switzerland to open a lab for Swiss government. He took my son to Switzerland to work. And then my son learned about these crystal yes. things. Specialized. Now he is specialized in crystallized things. And also he was doing DNA even long time. Nobody doing that. So they pursued their dream in their land. And he went to Cambridge. Oh, yeah. He got master's scholarship. He went to Cambridge. He got PhD from Cambridge. So that's our Helen Tan. It goes on and on. <laughs> I never tire of her talking about <laughs> early China or her sons that are finding a cure for cancer. One of the things that we all know about you, if you know Helen for five minutes, she cooks for you. And she makes a most delicious lotus blossom soup, actually in her crock pot. And she floats something that I didn't even know existed, lotus nuts. So I want to thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Lotus Nuts for Helen Tan. Thank you, Sydney. And again, I'm going to remind you to come on down to the video club. A lot going on down here. We're right next to Clubhouse 2. And thank you for being with us. And thank you for being with us.